Well, that's fucking it, I guess. 7.23 p.m. on August 22nd. I'm fucking hurt. Like, I don't get it. Like, how, how you can just start trying to love somebody and then just cut that fucking switch right off. How the fuck does that happen? That's not even possible. Oh, I don't want to try anymore. I'm going to give up. I want to run away. Any small minor infraction. She thinks it's the end of the fucking world. And then she goes and talks to fucking Tyler Mankey's bitch ass. Like he's any better. He's just going to sit there and fucking agree with her so he can fuck her. Get in her goddamn pants. Tyler Mankey, you're a piece of shit, dude. what I've done to deserve this. I mean, I've said some things that I shouldn't have said, but I haven't acted or shown any action of of malice or vengefulness or anything like that. You want to sit here and say that you didn't go and start talking to him out of spite, out of vengefulness. Do you know what the definition of those fucking things are? You only go and do that when we're into it. You only go and do that when you think it's the end of the fucking world. Or when there's something... Relationships or whatever the fuck that shit was. Something you wanted in the future. So isn't that something you're supposed to work up to? So pretty much you guys are in a relationship, but... It's just not official. Right? What the fuck does that even mean? Why did I even go that far with it? I should have known you were going to do this shit for a fifth time. I should have fucking known it. When you're starting to love somebody, that's your words, starting to. If something small comes up and you turn around and run in the direction of ultimate betrayal, there is something wrong with you. And you do not love that person. You think you do. You may think that you love them. And yeah, maybe I do love you more than you love me. Who gives a shit? What matters is that we both love each other, right? But here's the problem. I'm getting attacked from every goddamn direction. From my friends, from Courtney, and everyone's just trying to place the blame on me. Like, I didn't just apologize for what the fuck I did. I said, I called her, uh, the C word. I called her a cold hearted bitch. I said all these fucking things because I found out she was talking to Tyler. I found that out. So while I had no right to call her names, I did have a right to be upset. I did apologize for what I said. I did the whole, uh, I want you out in 48 hours thing, like out of anger. I was angry. And then I took it back. That's not a fucking ultimatum, is it? I don't don't think so. Ultimatums are like, hey, this is how it's going to go, or that's how it's going to go. You give them a decision. You're not saying get out in 48 hours or don't. That doesn't make any fucking sense. Getting out in 48 hours that I said out of anger, and then I took it back because I realized it was irrational and apologized for it. But the whole problem is, is you don't want to accept the fact that there is a reason... There's a damn good reason why I'm that upset and saying those things. You went and betrayed me again for the fifth time with the same motherfucker. You know how it feels when... You know how it feels when your ex goes and fucks your best friend. Yeah, you want to go and do it to me? Because of something that I did five years ago that I haven't done since? I've actually improved my fucking self. I'll get back with you. Hold on. Anyways. You guys don't even know the whole fucking story, but the problem with this entire situation is where was my betrayal? Where did I betray in this situation? 
Where did I betray in any situation within the last fucking, what, three or four weeks? I should have known. And you know, the thing is, I wasn't even fucking surprised about it. I, I screamed for like maybe a couple seconds or yelled for a couple seconds and then it was done. I was like, you know what? I don't even know why I'm surprised. This is, this is her fucking mindset. Negative, negative, negative. You pay attention to the negative shit, but I mean, and that's easy to do, so I understand. But what I don't understand is how you can't see that when I apologize for something and admit that I'm wrong about something, I mean that shit. And I try to improve it. Listen, I'm going to brag on myself for a minute. I did this at home a little bit ago. Check this shit out. I'm going to show you why I am a man who strives for greatness, a man who jumps through hoops to get to where I want to fucking be. The entire reason I had that drive was because of her and because of my kids. I promised her I would take care of her. I've kept that fucking promise. And then she wants to say, well, well, I took care of you for, for you were out of job for a year. That's because you left me when my uncle died. My uncle and I were very close. He was my mentor. He, he, and then she wants to throw out there that, well, you didn't mean that much to me. Something I said, like, probably around the time that he died that I didn't mean because I was upset and grieving. And she wants to say that, well, me leaving was me grieving. Maybe so. Maybe so, but that doesn't mean that it's any less inconsiderate. Does it? No. No, it doesn't. I am tired of every time she ends up getting caught. The only reason she's sorry is because she got caught. For all I know, she's been talking to him this whole fucking time and just deleting the goddamn messages. She's talking shit about me behind my back. I'm not doing that to her. Uh, She's talking to him. The fact that she's even talking to that motherfucker is what pisses me off the most. When she could have spoke up and said something because I misunderstood her and she misunderstood me. She's trying to put words in my mouth and say that I said something I didn't fucking say about the Kentucky deal. If my family, you'll know. If you if you don't know, just message me. I'll fucking explain it to you. But in this particular situation, I was wrong in calling her names. I didn't hit her. I didn't. Like, the entire time, like, I'm getting aggressive, you know, with my words and shit. But the problem with that is... Ever since the incident that happened like a year and a half ago or something where I was, I was coming down off drugs and I threw her across the floor. And she wants to say that the kids were in the room. No, they were not. They weren't even anywhere near the vicinity. They walked in after the fact. Doesn't make it any less wrong. Doesn't. But ever since then, she's... Anytime I get aggressive with my words and start, you know, trying to explain it the way that I need to... I need to have her understand. I'll try to caress her face or grab her by her face. Like, just just listen to me. It's not to hurt. It's not out of any intent to harm her at all. But she gets afraid. For what? And she sits here and acts like I have no reason to be upset. Like, what, I'm supposed to just sit here and take the fact that you're betraying me again with the same motherfucker when you know exactly what you're doing is fucking wrong and inconsiderate and selfish and the ultimate betrayal. And you're done trying? Fine. Give up. I'll be here. I'll always fucking be here. I'm never going to be spiteful to you. I'm never going to try to take revenge on you. But one thing I will do is admit that you are basically dead to me if you're going to do that shit. I don't want to hear a fucking word from you because I didn't betray you. I didn't. Tell me what's worse. Name calling or betrayal? Betrayal. 
she was thinking about talking to him, that's, that should have been like an alarm in her fucking brain saying, hey, hey, you know, maybe you should speak up and say something to Chris because you're wanting to go talk to this motherfucker again who don't give a shit about you at all. He doesn't have enough respect for other people's relationships that he can just fucking stay out of it. And whether you want to say that it's a relationship or not, it is a relationship. Not meaning we're boyfriend, girlfriend, fiancés, or whatever. It is a relationship because it's something that you said you wanted, and you started loving me again, and I once again fell for it, got attached. One small mistake, one small misunderstanding, and you turn it around and you fucking obliterate everything with the ultimate betrayal of going and talking to that motherfucker again. When all you had to do was speak up. And I'm hurt. My heart hurts. Do you see it in my fucking eyes? Look at my eyes. I've been crying. The only person, or I'm sorry, the only people that can really make me feel better when I'm crying are my daughters. Ain't that fucking sad? Where she wants to, you know, be cold and mean and act as if I didn't try, I didn't fight, and I have no right to be upset about nothing. Well, I'm supposed to... Are you fucking stupid? Genuinely, that's that's a genuine question. Are you fucking stupid? Do you not see where I was going with this whole thing? I just wanted to know that you weren't going to abandon me again like you did when my uncle died. And that was a question you never fucking answered. So, And then you want to say that that meant that I was saying that you want, I wanted you to stay in that town and, and die or something over, you know, leaving because of me. I never said that. Those were your words. How do you get that out of, so you're going to abandon me again? The simple question. Like I said, I mean, do whatever you want. Stay. Don't stay. Fight for us. Don't fight for us. You know what I want. You know I'm fucking here. Even after you've spit in my face countless times. It doesn't matter what you do. I am... I I was going somewhere with this. Anyways, the whole... uh, Toot my own horn for a little bit. Where I strive for success. I'm 30 years old. Back in 2018, at the age of 26, 27, I went to vocational school for... Uh, my, my class A CDL. I got it. You know what else I got? A fucking triples endorsement. I've driven triples. I've driven reefer. Uh, reefer units, refrigerated units. Uh, I've also gotten my... I'm on the president's list. I have a certificate of... Or a certificate of... Uh, I can't remember what the other one was. It was basically the certificate that showed that I completed the school, or the the, the vocational school. Then I end up getting my boom crane license to operate an ABC boom crane, Uh, forklift operator's certificate. All these things that I strive for. I, I make $20 an hour in my fucking job. I work over 50 hours a week. No, that doesn't make me better than her, but what it does say is that I am fighting, and I am striving for greatness, and I know what I want in life, and I want to take care of her and my children, I am their provider, that is my fucking job, what do you not understand about that, how stressful do do you have to make it, small misunderstanding, and you just obliterate the whole fucking thing, are you about, you don't strive for greatness, you think everything's gonna fucking fail, And with a mindset like that, it fucking will. Especially when you go for that ultimate betrayal. By talking to that piece of shit motherfucker who doesn't give two shits about you. He just wants your pussy. And yeah, I'm putting this public. Say whatever the fuck you want. I don't have any reason to believe that you even care anymore, but like I said, how can you just shut that switch off, I make $20 an hour at my job, I work over 50 hours a week, the reason I make over 40 grand a year, 
And yes, I feel good about that, and I am being a little bit arrogant in this situation. But what I am I'm trying to make a point, I strive for greatness. When I fall, I fall hard. But when I rise, I fucking rise. I am qualified the rest of my life. It's a meal ticket. The CDL, the blue green license, the forklift. These are all things that you don't understand. You want... If, okay, think about this. There's a, there are women, when they want to be with a guy, they want him to be successful, they want him to strive for greatness, show um, effort. Right? Right. That's what I do. I've done things within the first three years, I think, of our relationship that have pretty much been things that she just can't let go. But I haven't done them since. Does it make it any less wrong? No, it makes it just wrong what I did. Talking to this one girl, um, never did anything with her, but I was talking about doing things with her. This would have been back in 2017 when Courtney was pregnant. And yeah, that made me a piece of shit right there. It did. But you know what I did? I apologized for it. I stopped fucking talking to her, and I ain't fucking really talked to her since. I think I've talked to her casually a couple of times, but it was just, you know, a hey, hi, hello thing. Anyways. But that makes it okay for her to go for that ultimate betrayal. No, no, it don't. It does not make it okay. It actually makes you just as much of a POS as I was when I did it. But guess what? I ain't doing it n anymore and haven't done it in five, yeah, five years. You just, you can't let it go, man. That's not my problem. That's your problem. That's a personal fucking problem. You need to get help. I'm here. You know where I'm at. You know what I want. You want to give up? Fine. I'll do something else. Stay. Don't stay. Move out, don't move out. I don't fucking care. Do whatever the fuck you want. I already know what you're gonna fucking do anyway. I was there for you. I've been there for you. Yeah, I get upset and I say things I don't mean. After a, seven years, you don't fucking realize that when I get upset, I say things I don't mean. Same fucking thing that you do too. We're both guilty. We're both wrong. But what? If you look at the situation on a uh, who done who dirty the, the most, I would put that on her. Because I never went behind her back and talked shit about her to her ex-best friend. I never fucked one of her ex-best friends. I never fucked an enemy of hers. In fact... All the women that I've fucked with in our little spit, spittles of fucking separation. She didn't even know them. That's what you're supposed to do. That's how you move the fuck on. You don't you don't sit there and, and go for the very first fucking person you see that you know damn well doesn't care about anything else but your vagina. Which is fine. It's cool. More power to you. But the only reason you talk to him is because he fucking agrees with you. Of course he's going to agree with you. He wants you to spread your fucking legs. You went out to his fucking house that one night when it was storming. And you got busted. Because every time I send my location to you, you usually... Well, actually, not usually. You always send your location back. And that time you did it, it looked fishy to me. My gut told me something was up. You came home. I said, look, it only takes two buttons to press the fucking... Tell me where your location is. She's typing as well, saying, well, I'm driving, I'll do it when I stop. And I'm like, if you can press the, if you can text, you can send me your location. She's like, I'm doing voice text. I'm like, if you can push the two buttons it takes to do the voice text, you can push the two buttons it takes to send the location. So, I knew something was up. So, that night... I went through her phone, and I found out she was talking to that motherfucker again. Sending in provocative photos. I'm hurt.
hurt, man. The reason the title is called Ultimate Betrayal is because this is my final say. I want to end it on good terms. But what I also want is for her and everyone out there to understand I did not betray her. She did the very thing that she knew was going to obliterate everything just because of a small misunderstanding. Yeah, it hurt her. But you know what hurt me as well when I felt like she was going to abandon me? It was a flashback. We both agreed on that and understood each other there. So, why go talk to that motherfucker? You know exactly what you were doing. You knew what you were doing. I don't know why I'm trying to make excuses for you. You knew what you were doing. You didn't care. You didn't have any consideration for my feelings or, oh, we're not together. Yeah, Courtney, but you were sending me your fucking location every time I sent you mine for two fucking weeks. You can't do that. You can't just turn your love switch off. It don't fucking work that way. At least it shouldn't. And if it does, there's something wrong with you. You sound narcissistic. You sound like a psychopath. You read... Read what... I want to say Psychology 101 basically says... You know, the the traits of a psychopath. They don't accept guilt. They have no remorse for their actions or any consideration for the other person. They are... uh, They have antisocial behavior. And they... uh, If they feel like they've been done wrong, they will do things out of malice in spite to hurt the other person. And all of those things she has done to me. Am I a saint? Fuck no, I'm not a saint. But listen, I haven't done anything. My actions have shown what I want. Her actions have shown that she doesn't give a fuck. Her actions have shown that she doesn't love me like she says she does. Her actions have shown that she has absolutely no fucking remorse for what she's done. And she continues, after 24 hours, to still point the fucking finger at me. Sitting there crying, holding my fucking daughter, because it hurts, man. It fucking hurts. But I'm not allowed to be hurt. I'm not allowed. I have no fucking right to say shit. I can't fucking be upset about what she did. Like, that's what I genuinely feel like she's trying to say. Oh, you said this, this, and this. Yeah, I know what I said. But do you realize I was upset, right? It's the same shit you do. You get upset, you say things you don't fucking mean. Every time you open your fucking mouth, it's something negative, something spiteful, and it has no, um, no productivity towards solving the problem. And all this time, that's what I've been trying to do, and she just doesn't get it. She just doesn't care. She wants to give up because she thinks it's easier. You do that. Continue betraying me. Continue showing me that you don't give a fuck about me, even though you're living under my roof. And yes, I said get out in 48 hours, but that sounds a bit irrational if you ask me. So I was wrong in saying that, and... I admitted it, apologized for it, so like I said, stay, don't stay, do whatever the fuck you gotta do, but stay the fuck out of my way, unless you're trying to fight for us, if you ain't fighting for us, you're basically nothing to me, you're just a roommate living under my fucking roof, don't ask me for shit, because I gave you a place to stay, and I took care of you, and was there for you when no one else was, when you were having your fucking anxiety attacks, because your mom was being a certain way about, you know, keeping the kids or whatever, I was there. Anytime you attacked me when we got drunk with our with your key with my keyboard or or swung on me or pushed me, listen, you said right in front of the fucking landlady that I was gonna throw you across the floor because of one incident that happened a year ago. I've never put my hands on you like that since. That was a mistake, man. A dumb fucking mistake. But there was a good reason for it. Or well, it wasn't a good reason, but it was a reason provoked me, intentionally provoked me, so I mean, this is the ultimate betrayal, and uh, you can make it right, or make it worse, I'm going to sit by and say nothing, do nothing, I'm just going to do my fucking job, and whatever happens,
Thanks for listening to my long-ass fucking rant. Talk to you later.